Phase 3 has been a mixed bag at launch, and in only a week has seen a huge wave of changes. Some good, some bad, but let's talk about them and the impacts they have on the game. There have been so many problems that have arisen since Phase 3 launch, mostly related to the fact there was no PTR, and seemingly rushed split development time between Season of Discovery and the Cat of Beta, that crazy values that even simple napkin math would prove were overtuned came out, and knee-jerk responses from the developers in nerfing those values to players pointing this out. This is also your only spoiler warning if you care about those kind of things. But moving on. We can't start a chat about the launch of Phase 3 without talking about Nightmare Incursions first. If you farmed Incursions exclusively within the first 8-12 to 12 hours of launch, you got an insane amount of experience, enough to get to level 50, enough rep to get honored with Emerald Warden for the new level 50 starter set, and around 500-700 to 700 gold from the quest rewards. Incursions were rewarding people so much gold that Blizzard hotfixed nerfs in for the gold rewards over 5 times within 12 hours of launch. Not only that, but they further nerfed Nightmare Incursions quest experience by reducing the base quest experience but raising the incursion mob kills. This will make kill quests give more overall experience when you add the extra experience on the mob kill to them, so hopefully people will want to actually do them versus the current no kill click train optimizations that the content is now. There are and were still tons of bugs in the content preventing people from doing even the click objects train sometimes. Not to mention the clunkiness that is sharing your quest using a limited use inventory item that you get after opening box after box of random stuff that give out quests, versus the already built in quest sharing system that we have. And lastly, personally, I could deal with all that assuming the content was fun. I don't find it fun. For me, the quests are the same uninspired drivel that you'll be doing elsewhere, but instead you're just doing it in an overly green mirror world while Blizzard is emergency hotfixing your rewards while you're actively doing the quests. While I fully expected it to be boring, I'd be lying if I said I hadn't hoped for more fun, buried content, and not this instant level boosting area that was released. While Blizzard has implemented some new runes this phase, this methods of acquisition can be pretty weird for some of them. I applaud them listening to the player's feedback about having runes available to actually level with instead of swinging back around to unlock them closer to the phase level cap like we were forced to do in phase 2. However, for some of these, they have instead replaced them with some really silly ideas like forcing several classes to piggyback off each other to unlock the runes that they want faster, which gives the chance for players to be awful to each other and treat it like a business instead of a community. For example, priests rely on mages and warlocks to get the new rune that they want because warlocks and mages have a way to farm the item way better with their class-specific trick versus priests having to farm them off random mobs in certain areas that are also needed for people to complete their quests. This leads people to wanting to charge hundreds of gold potentially for a spot in their rune raid group because of the increased incursion gold inflation going around, as opposed to just playing with the person to play the new content together. I personally as a warlock don't have it as bad, but farming up enough of the required new quest materials from the explorer imp trips that take 20 minutes and return with an RNG bag of mostly crap make me feel like I'm just kind of wasting my time with it, and ended up paying a mage, luckily only 10 gold, just to get it over with so that I can get my backdraft room so my DPS build isn't completely gimped now that I'm 50 and working towards the new raid. I can only imagine what happens with this once the majority of people are finished and not doing these quests anymore. One piece of advice they didn't listen to though was making the content more interesting than a walking simulator. For example, with the backdraft room, you're required to go to four different loan zones with the new material you got from the Explorer M quest. As a warlock, it's called World Core Fragments to then attune to four different ley lines, and at each ley line spawns an elite that you have to kill, and then you combine the drops from all the elites to make your new rune. Wow, that sounds so original, Blizzard. Almost like we literally just did that exact same thing last phase for a rune, minus the elite killing. They keep using the same uninspired sticks for us to go through and unlock these runes, which is starting to wear on me as a player. They sold us on these epic quest lines to unlock these things at BlizzCon announcements, and not an hour of back and forth boring clicking dialog boxes, and maybe fighting something. Also, obligatory shout out for my druid homies because they still haven't fixed the mangle rune after acknowledging it was broken before phase 3 launch. To be clear, I haven't personally experienced the raid yet simply because I was waiting for the dust to settle and didn't want to deal with the crap fest I've watched on streams and read about online. But the fact Blizzard released it in an unbeatable state originally is pretty crazy, even if the top raiding guilds didn't have all the new runes. Whether that was simply for Blizzard's ego or some sort of media and stream PR spotlight push, it isn't a good look in my opinion to release something that is literally impossible for players to beat and then be proud about it. Before the nerf to the trash, 
the trash had more HP than the Nomer bosses do, and the final two bosses had 4 million HP. Yes, that's right, 4 million HP. To put this into context, Ragnaros had 1.1 million HP in vanilla and 2.2 million HP in the updated Season of Mastery. Ragnaros is the final boss of the first 40-man level 60 raid Molten Core. The bosses in Sunken Temple at release had almost four times as much HP as Vanilla Rag and almost two times as much HP as Season of Mastery Ragnaros, and the same amount of HP as Vanilla Patchwork, which is a Nax raid boss, when the bosses in Sunken Temple are 20-man level 50 bosses. Yes, we have runes that increase our power, but even with that, I don't believe that this boss would ever be beatable with 4 million HP. At level 50 at least. Like, we might be able to come back at level 60 and it'll be fine. But they have also seemed to learn nothing from the Nomer, having designed some of these new raid fights to require little to no melee to be considered the optimal comp. Although that may just be an early phase gearing issue and strategy issue. And, that's finally, without even mentioning people were reporting bosses would despawn in the middle of fights and never respawn, preventing them from continuing on in their lockout, plus little bugs with the fights themselves. Again, not a real good look if you're reducing lockouts per phase and then taking multiple lockouts to actually make the raid playable, while insulting your player base that they just aren't skilled enough to beat the content, without you even releasing a PTR to test these values. Yes, this is what basically amounts to a paid beta, but the sheer amount of bugs involved make me positive that the team is stretched to its limit maintaining five different versions of the game. There were bugs with incursions preventing you from completing quest objectives, plus the obvious overtuned quest rewards. Nomus Thermoplug doesn't give you any extra experience like the rest of the Nomer bosses do while you're leveling up. Despawning raid bosses in the new Sunken Temple raid, plus general overtuning and bugged mechanics. Bugged runes like Static Shock preventing players from attaining them. Dungeon bosses bugging out and not dropping an item if the loot table rolls an old item that has had its stats updated for Season of Discovery, and vice versa on Normal Era and Hardcore, bosses not dropping anything when the loot table rolls an updated Season of Discovery item. The Ash and Veil Daily not rewarding any reputation to level 50s upon completing it. Trading plus Auction House plus Mail being disabled for a few hours Friday after emergency maintenance. Felguard being bugged regarding scaling and skill grimoires. The Dark Moon Fair Sandstorm Trinket not having an internal cooldown for casts, Unstable Affliction not benefiting from Haunt, and these are only some of the more major bugs, but there have been also a ton of smaller bugs that are coming out of the woodwork. So much I dare say Season of Discovery Phase 3 has more bugs than Helldivers 2. And while not all of these bugs would 100% have been fixed if there was a PTR, a lot of them would have been, and that is an undisputable fact. While there were, of course, updates, tweaks, and fixes of the content when it went live, and Blizzard has released updates to fix some of these issues over the past week that launch has happened, the sheer amount of issues at launch really makes me think they need to abandon their no PTR, go explore mantra, because basically almost every issue talked about in this video would have been discovered before it went live if they had even done a three-day weekend-long PTR. So far, it seems like all we're discovering in Season of Discovery is to exploit early and exploit often, which isn't even something longtime players needed to discover, having learned that from retail many years ago. If you have enjoyed our content, why not throw us a like and a sub? Got a different opinion or want to agree with something that we said? Let us know down in the comments. Other than that, thanks for tuning in and have a good night.